More information keeps coming out about this Trump Arlington National Cemetery controversy. And I want to fill you in on that. You've probably seen this around, but again, I'll try to give you the the latest as of what we know now. A pretty disgusting series of events playing out. And now the U.S. Army having to come out. This is rare. Speaking on an issue like this that's sort of political and having to defend an Arlington staffer as they should, given the smearing of that person by the Trump campaign. So if you're not at all familiar on the anniversary of the pullout from Afghanistan and the deaths of soldiers during that pullout. Trump went to Arlington National Cemetery and presumably was there to honor these soldiers. But in the process, it was clear to one of the staffers that potentially rules, even laws were being violated because of the photography that was going on and the politicization of an event at this cemetery which is not supposed to be what goes on and so it actually got physical where a trump staffer shoved out of the way an arlington staffer as that person was trying to enforce the rules of the cemetery ben kessling had a nice thread on this and i'll play some cnn reporting for you about this But before that, I I do think this gets to when Trump tries to make photo ops out of everything, even when you're not supposed to, it shows where the priorities lie. And I'll try again not to get into, as we did so extensively in that recent segment, the entire Afghanistan discussion and, and some of the MAGA talking points and, of course, the very real tragedy that took place, but then also how MAGA has exploited that dishonestly. That was in a recent segment. I'll try to remember to link it in the description of this video if you do want to watch it, if you missed it. But here, Ben Kessling says, The Trump campaign at Arlington controversy can be confusing. Here it is broken down simply. You can't bring your own photography crew to Arlington without permission. You can't have your photo crew take photos even if one family consents. That's because other graves are included in those photos and those families haven't given permission. More importantly, grieving families shouldn't feel pressured by powerful people to give consent. Section 60 is noteworthy because the graves are those of troops killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. People visiting those graves aren't distant relatives. It's moms and dads and wives and husbands and kids and friends and fellow troops. The grief is still very present. The staff at Arlington aren't being political when they prevent photo crews from taking unauthorized photos. The staff is being apolitical. They're being professional. They're holding the dignity of Arlington. I've been to Arlington many times and I've never seen someone grinning and giving a thumbs up for a photo. I've never seen it because it's not something you do at Arlington if you know anything about the place and the men and women who are buried there. It's a very serious subject, obviously, which is why, again, I I come back to this a lot. The more... The more gravity that's attached to a subject, the more severity especially things that relate to heartbreaking subjects, the more angering it is to see people behaving themselves in bad ways regarding a topic or being dishonest about that topic. It's even worse to do bad things surrounding such important and consequential subjects. NPR, I'm pretty sure, originally broke this story and talked about how the Army says Arlington National Cemetery worker was pushed aside by Trump aides. The U.S. Army said an employee at Arlington National Cemetery who tried to ensure adherence to rules that prohibit political activities at the cemetery was abruptly pushed aside. In some reporting, it was described as an assault, but that the employee decided not to press charges. Yeah, there we go. Against the Trump campaign staffers who allegedly pushed her. And I don't want to show you the photo that was referenced was Trump smiling. Thumbs up, which was strange. And because of the violations of these rules in the the lack of respect that was given to them for political purposes, I don't want to then go, oh, so here are the photo op related things that he wanted everyone to see, right? So that's why I'm not showing you these things. I don't have control over CNN necessarily here, what they're going to play, but here's some more reporting. I mean, we're learning new details about an incident that turned physical at Arlington National Cemetery during Donald Trump's visit there on Monday. It happened while Trump was in Section 60, the burial site for recent U.S. casualties. Trump suggesting on True Social that the problem stemmed from his campaign's use of photography. CNN's Elena Treen has more on that uh, from Washington. What, what happened here? 
Right. Well, Sarah, so a lot of back and forth from both sides, the Arlington National Cemetery, but also the Trump campaign on what exactly did happen. But what we know is that uh, some people who worked at the cemetery had blocked members of Donald Trump's team, members of his campaign on Monday from attending and participating in some of the wreath ceremony uh, when Donald Trump was laying some of the wreaths on Monday to honor the 13 fallen U.S. service members who were at uh, Kabul's Abbey Gate during the chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. Now, I'm going to break down some of this for you. So the big question here is about whether or not uh, Donald Trump was able uh, to, you know, participate in uh, partisan events, as the cemetery calls it, uh, while while at that visit, particularly in this area called Section 30. Now, we did hear from Donald Trump. He posted, as you mentioned, Sarah, on Truth Social. And as you said, he did seem uh, to argue that perhaps this was because of photography. This is what um, he wrote on on Truth Social. And uh, they also included a, um, a post or a letter from the families who said that they had supported this effort. He had said, quote, we had given our approval for President Trump's official videographer and photographer to attend the event, ensuring the sacred moments of remembrance were respectfully captured. And so we can cherish these memories forever. And that is from the families of some of the. And I'll stop that one uh, to play for you some Maggie Haberman reporting about a different family with a different take. But again, this is, this is not about getting into a he said, he said, she said, or oh, did some of the families get permission? They not. Uh, to me, this is more about. It really does trickle down from the top, doesn't it? Where Trump probably wasn't even involved necessarily in the decision, obviously in the moment, not of, of one of his staffers to physically push an Arlington staffer because they dared to say, "Wait, wait, wait! You're not supposed to be." recording this and how that low character move shows up in Trump's campaign and I think the type of people you choose to staff your campaign with the type of people who want to work for your campaign you then end up seeing instances like this even if you didn't say go assault that person my colleague Jaden just told me and you can look at this on screen we're gonna put on screen five million views last week came from people who aren't subscribed if that's one of you, click that subscribe button, baby. It's easy. It's free, but it makes all the difference. Back to the video. I have reporting from another family. Uh, it has a, a soldier buried in that section 60, which is a very uh, restricted section. It is it is for people, for soldiers uh, who were uh, who died after serving in Iraq and Afghanistan for the most part. This is a family who the soldier in question, he was a, a master sergeant, uh, Andrew Marcasano. He died by suicide in, in 2020, and he had served multiple tours, uh, combat tours, uh, including in Afghanistan, but not only. And his gravesite was caught in pictures as Trump was posing with the gravesite of another sergeant uh, at the same section. Now, that other sergeant's family had indeed said they would like Trump there. As you noted, these, these Gold Star families welcomed him. As you also noted, the rules of the cemetery are that uh, campaign photography, campaign filming is not permitted. Uh, you know, f uh, photographs that are going to be used for election purposes. And the Marcosano family certainly was not contacted or asked for this, but his gravestone is now in that TikTok video from behind it, that Trump uh, posted on TikTok. He's also, his, the, his, the front of the gravesite with his name is in pictures that were posted online with Trump posing with a thumbs up. And, you know, they were very clear, uh, the family, in a statement to us that they, they really support this other family and other families uh, that lost people in the Abbey Gate bombing uh, during, uh, uh, in Kabul and Afghanistan, uh, but that this is a restricted area and that they would hope that uh, everyone would be respectful of that. It was a restrained statement, but it was very clearly displeased. Right. So just quite the incident. And and regardless of the debates now, the Trump campaign defending themselves and and then the staffer not pressing charges, but more information being revealed about the credibility of the allegation from the employee and then the U.S. Army speaking out in support of the employee saying, yes, they were breaking the rules. Yes, this person was in the right to try to stop it. I think this is, as so many of these stories become, 
an example that by itself can be troubling, but is also so often representative of a broader characteristic of, of Trump or his campaign or his priorities and how so many of these things are about politics over people. They are politicizing things that shouldn't be. And they're about photo ops. And, and that comes into play in a major way with the broader discussion of the withdrawal from Afghanistan. When we go through and fact check some of the claims they make, like the false claims they'll make about how much equipment was left, or some people saying U.S. soldiers weren't, didn't die under Trump. We saw U.S. congressmen claim that. Trying to say, Biden, these, this, you know, blood's on your hands, but Trump kept our soldiers safe even though more U.S. soldiers died under Trump than, than Biden. So we, we fact check these things because the facts are important, of course. But that's not to say mistakes weren't made. Tragedies didn't occur. Things shouldn't be learned and people's families shouldn't be loved given the sacrifice that their family members made. All of those things, the, the reason that Trump presumably was there, those reasons, what could be the good part of it, should be focused on still. We shouldn't immediately jump into just, ah, as so often happens, and we ignore what was a really heartbreaking and serious day for these families and with the broader suffering that's happened while we were in Afghanistan and during the pullout and since. But can we can we just be factual about it? And can we not do what Trump's so clearly doing here? Someone who, in the case of Trump, has disparaged veterans over and over and over and over again, who then wants to benefit from a photo op. And it's just gross, especially given that now we know he was breaking rules. Let me know what you thought of that in the comments. And... Uh, I'll talk to you in the next video.